Today we're going to see how hot we can get things. In many ways, the history of humanity can be summarized as humans learning how to make fire hotter and hotter. This has been a constant challenge and journey as we work our way through time, unlocking ceramics and metals as the maximum working temperatures we can reach get higher and higher. In this video, we're attempting to construct a permanent solution to our needs and build a multi-purpose kiln and furnace that will unlock many materials we'll need to master and utilize in our ongoing journey to unlock the different technologies of civilization. But first, today's video is sponsored by Autonomous. Okay, so here it is, all assembled, the Autonomous Desk. As you can tell, very quiet, very sleek. Just press a single button, it goes up and down. Adjust it to your exact preference, no matter your height. I've always been curious about trying a standing desk. With this desk, you can just press a button, and it'll switch back and forth. You can change your comfort, help improve your health and your posture. It's a really nice desk. So thanks again to Autonomous for sponsoring today's video. You can get your own on the link below. Using our promo code, you can get 5% off. Previously, I've explored a wide variety of different materials for building furnaces and kilns. The most basic was just using the earth itself and burying pottery below it to fire it. We've also experimented with earthen insulating materials like cob, made from clay, sand, and straw, and a few different configurations for melting bronze and smelting iron. We've also just started getting into brick making with fired ceramic bricks, allowing even more heat resistant structures to be formed. But so far, all these attempts have been very temporary, each a laborious process to construct the furnace, which only lasts a handful of firings at best. Now, finally, with a permanent location where we can build, what we really need is a long-term solution for getting things hot. So the first step of the process is perfecting our brick-making recipe so we can officially unlock ceramic bricks in our tech tree and start using that for the rest of the process. We've now experimented with a few different recipes for bricks, mixing various ratios of clay with sand, lime, and grog. But our initial attempts weren't the strongest or the most heat resistant of bricks. This time we tried a batch with a new recipe which involves a much higher ratio of grog, which is made by crushing fired ceramics into a powder. This clay's way better than that. After burying them and pit firing on top of them, we yield a much stronger brick. Putting the fire brick to a high heat test in the coal forge, we can see that it can handle being heated up to a glowing red without any damage to its structural integrity. I think we can officially unlock bricks in our tech tree and move forward with some larger projects. All right, so cleared an area here to build the kiln. Got a little buildup mound here that we'll build part of it on top of so we don't have to fill it in with extra brick. So just gonna fill it in with rubble. So we're basically gonna do kind of a combination of a Roman glass furnace, which is just a big dome that you have a big fire and it contains the heat and you have crucibles along the edges that are filled with your molten glass that you can then work. There'll be a few holes for glory holes to kind of reheat it as you work things. But we're also building it as a combination and its first purpose is gonna be for ceramics. So it's gonna have an attached second chamber will be on top of this mound here. It'll actually be the container where the wares are stored and the heat will transfer from the firebox or the dome and into there, heat everything and fire them. And then we'll exit out a chimney that'll be behind it, making a cross draft kiln. Kind of a, a hybrid design. I don't think there's many glass blowers that are also potters. An interesting fusion of a few different skill sets. Hopefully we can get it to work. Lay it out and start laying some brick.
So after a bit of work, we finished the first chamber. When this is in the kill mode, this is uh, the firebox, basically, where you build the fire and produce the heat, which then gets pushed into the second chamber, which we'll build next, which is the wares chamber. That actually holds the pottery that we're firing. Build some sort of arch over it, make it nice and fancy. We'll see how well that goes. We have gaps in the bricks here for the heat to come through, as well as some of the ash, hopefully, so we can get a natural ash glaze to a, our pottery as well. And next that will be the chimney with vents down here as well, and that'll create what's called a cross draft. that allows the heat generated to go through here, and it'll kind of circulate and get trapped in here, allowing it to build to a higher temperature before it's eventually pushed out here. When we're doing the glass blowing, most of what we're working with is just gonna be this first container, be kind of inspired by a Roman furnace. And those are oftentimes built just with cob, which we've used for things like the bloomery, which have a fair amount of insulating factor, but they are not very durable. And after a few firings, they get brittle and start to crack, and uh, you have to replace them. We use the ceramic bricks. They're durable to higher temperature because they've been fired. We're gonna cover it with cob to help add an extra factor of insulation. So next up, we'll build the wares chamber, the chimney, and cover everything in cob. All right, so next up we gotta do the arch. That's something I've done before, so it should be probably a little bit of a challenge. Basically gonna use some slightly angular bricks, allowing it to build an arch over it, to get a little bit more structural integrity. We just have to support it when it's there, and once it's dried, we can take out the supports, but uh, it should offer something that's pretty secure. So got the last little pieces of it together now and it should be ready for an initial firing. We have the first chamber, which is extra insulated with some of the cob. It's a relatively thin layer right now, so it might be something we build up as we go to get a little bit thicker and more insulated. And then there's a few other improvements we might want to make along the way. Kind of a custom design to try and meet multiple needs. One improvement that could be made is putting a sort of shelf in here that the wood then gets put on top of and all the ash is going to run through. Then the hole at the bottom would either be for clearing out the ash or potentially forcing air. In which case this hole that was originally more for glass blowing might be how you actually feed more of the fire into it. Here we have the actual chamber for the wares. We have holes on either side that allows a draft to form and the heat to get sucked through. A one improvement we might want to make is actually some form of wall that forces the air to kind of circulate inside the chamber and that'll allow it to kind of get to a higher temperature before the hot air is sucked out. Another improvement would be something like a damper so you can adjust how much air actually escapes. Probably eventually want potentially to add shelves and such into here for firing ceramics. And then the door right now is just going to be made by stacking a bunch of bricks in front of it but eventually we'll probably want like a full piece that we can just slide in and out for easy access. Yeah, I mean, other than that, it's just kind of firing it up and see how well it works. Hopefully it draws the heat and retains it. And for this initial attempt, I'm gonna try something at a little bit lower temperature and just try and bake a pizza. There's a lot of trial and error with projects like this. If you want to offer your help, join our Discord and join in the discussion on our upcoming projects. All right, so we got a pretty good inferno going now. So I got a, bit, a few holes I can tell already. Smoke seems to be escaping that'll need to be patched at some point to kind of maximize the amount of draft and heat that goes into there. But for the most part, I can tell it's, it is working. We have definite flames shooting through. 
And here, even with a wide open, it's already, so once we close that up, it's probably gonna be about hot enough for pizza. We did our test pizza, did cook it, or at least burn it to some extent. It does not taste very good. I think the main issue is that because it's a pottery kiln, the big advantage of it is that you're getting wood ash that goes through it and out. So that coats your pottery and gives it a natural glaze, but it also coats your pizza, which does not leave a great taste. Next, built a shelf in the main chamber so the pizza can cook via just the fire and not the smoke exhaust. See if that gets a better result. Bottom still raw, top's all burnt. Not quite a perfect pizza. So made one last adjustment to help cook the underside by preheating some thin ceramic pieces to help better cook the bottom side. So after a bit of trial and error, finally have a successful pizza from the kiln or furnace or oven or whatever it's trying to be. So I think the biggest challenge going forward is gonna be controlling the temperature because with pottery, it's very important to very slowly increase the temperature so they don't explode. So kind of mastering the wood fire technique and knowing how much wood to put in, how fast, how much airflow and everything is gonna be really crucial. And that's part of the challenge with the pizza is that just with that, it's pretty hot. Our crust is now nicely cooked and that's a pretty good pizza. A little crispy on the outside, but in the end, we kind of met our first milestone with the kiln furnace oven. And that's something basic like a pizza with a controlled temperature. So next up, it's gonna be ceramics. It'll be a lot more important to control the temperature, slowly increase it, and then try to get some really hot temperatures. And then after that, we can see just how hot we can get. So the next milestone after just basic ceramics is going to be glass. And trying to get something that hot at around 2000 degrees minimum is really hard. That's kind of what I ran into before. That's what made making glass, clear glass, so difficult. It was hard to get that high of a temperature. Hopefully we can achieve something that was a struggle with modern technology, with propane furnaces and everything that might actually be easier doing primitively. We'll find out as we continue to raise the bar and move on to the next challenges. But until then, got some pizza. Thanks for watching. Not too bad. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.